In the previous session, we trained a model on our custom data set and here are the kind of results we got from this trained model. We also saw that there were different flavors of the Yolo X model and the model we just trained was a Yolo XS version or the Yolo XS flavor. Now we're going to look at the Yolo X Nano flavor which is a flavor created for environments where we have low compute resources like the edge devices, mobile devices, web browsers, CPUs, and so on and so forth. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this. Also in this session, while doing the training of this lighter model, we are going to integrate 1DB. 1DB is a developer-first MLOps platform. MLOps actually stands for Machine Learning Operations Platform, which permits practitioners build better models faster by experiment tracking. So now we are not just going to run the training process and then leave it that way. Now we're going to be able to run our training process or run our different experiments, track these experiments, and even be able to share these experiments via reports. Now, the next feature of 1DB is the usage of data set and model artifacts. So with this, we are able to store certain versions of our data set and certain versions of our models. So supposing we've just trained our Yolo XS model on say a given data set, we are gonna store that version or those versions of the data set and the models respectively. And then later on, we could go ahead and modify the data set modify and obviously after training we're going to modify the model and then we are also going to store the data set and the model at different instances hence we are able to track our development process very easily another feature which comes with 1db is the interactive data visualization tables and then also the hyperparameter tuning sweeps then you should also know that integrating 1db into your projects is made quite easy depending no matter the framework you can always integrate 1db so even if you've built your project already or even if you're working on someone else's project you could integrate 1db very easily based on the the different libraries you're working on different frameworks you're working with in our case we're dealing with pytorch so this is basically how you initialize a project you set these configurations and then you start logging in data there we go we get into this installation and then we are going to include 1db so right here we're going to have pip install 1db and that's it now we already have this installed so we're not going to do run that cell now we've installed 1db the next thing we we'll also want to do is to import 1db so in here we have import 1db we run that cell let's add a, a code cell and then from here we do 1db we run this command 1db login and we run that and there we go now we're going to click on this here so we suppose that you've already created your 1db account which is quite easy all you need to do is to get right in here click on sign up and you can sign up with your github account or your google account now that's set, we are going to add in this logger right here. So we have logger, we specify 1db, 1db project, and then we give our project a name. Let's say object detection. So let's have it here. We have object detection. That's fine. So now we've set this, we are going to start with a training. But this time around, we're not going to train a yellow S model. That is a yellow XS model as we did previously. Now we're going to train on Yolo Nano model. That's the smallest available model, model of this Yolo X series of models. So we have the train, we have this, and that's fine. Now this time around our weights, we have Nano right here. And then we have to ensure that we have this file set. So let's get back into this experiments. We have experiments, we have example, we have Yolo X VOC. Uh, we have this but we don't have the yolo nano so let's copy this and then create this new let's create this new file and call it yolo x voc nano dot py so we create this new file and then in order to get like um 
the actual structure we're supposed to have for this yellow nano file we could open up this custom here so we have this custom no no not really this custom this default actually uh, because this is for custom data sets now this is a default so here we have yellow x nano we click upon this and then you'd see that there's a different configuration right here we have this get model method which permits us configure this yolo x model particularly so here we have for the yolo nano we have its own configuration right here you see we have specified its own configuration specify its own backbone specify its own head recall that with the backbone we able to extract features with the head we able to classify and correctly say whether a particular object is found at a particular point or not while specifying the objects class and so that's why you see for this default files here we have some certain different configurations so you see that for the yellow xs for example you have this uh, for the yellow xx let's say yellow xx we have this yellow xl you see we have all those different configuration files here so that's it we have our yellow x nano and so we copy this out so we copy this out and then place it in this uh, yellow file here so we have um let's scroll up let's take this off take off this default example yellow x voc yellow x nano and then we paste this out here so this is fine now and then you'll notice that this input size is no longer the 640 we had now it's 416. Uh, we have that right and then we also specify the max epoch so here we have self max epoch and we have let's say 20. then from here we save this file and then we could go ahead with the train so let's run the cell and then see what we get um what do we have here we have an error which pops up we told that this file right here doesn't exist now this has to do with the data set so we could get back to this and then reuse the same methods we had used for this yellow x or yellow xs version in the yellow x nano version so instead of having or uh, instead of having the data loader for this load from the or make use of the coco data set we are going to use this one which uses the pascal voc data set notice how the with the default we using the coco data set whereas here it was specified yellow x voc so here is a pascal voc data set and so we are just going to copy this methods right here so we have this get data loader see it's for pascal voc we have this get evaluator and we have this get evaluator so we copy all this out from here up to this copy out this method there we go we have up to this here okay so we've copied out this method and then we paste it just after this get model so we have this get model which is there to ensure that we have all the different parameters specified for the yellow nano model and then we now deal with a data set so that's it so we have our get evaluator method we have our get eval loader we have our get data loader now let's save this and see what we get let's close this up close this and then relaunch our training process now we get again this error get yellow x data there not defined so let's check this out here we have this oh, okay we have this which is not defined now let's look at our yellow x s so we click on this yellow x s and we find that this is actually imported right here so we need to import this so let's have this copied and then we add this to this file so we paste that out there it looks fine now let's save this and then start again with this training so let's run this again then again we're faced with this error in object has no attribute normal and one walk around with device for this was not to use this year so we are not going to use mosaic augmentation we just set this to 1.0 save that and that should be fine so let's close this up now and then retrain again then we get this other error name touch not defined let's get back to these two files and see what we could do about that so you see we have this import touch and then import touch distributed here so let's just have it this way okay so we have that 
so we have this now let's save it and this should work fine this time around so let's run this right here and as you could see trading has started you could scroll back here we have the model definition and then let's get back up let's check out on this information which is given to us just before the trading starts so here we have this as you could see now we see you could view your project at this and then view run at this so this is there are some links to the 1db platform which permits you to view your project as it runs in real time so there here let's click on this run and we can already see in real time the different loss values as the training process goes on clicking here we see we have the cpu utilization system memory utilization and all other device uses statistics like for example you see you have the gpu power memory allocated and so on and so forth so with one db all this kind of information as you could see has been logged in very easily and it's actually very traceable that is every time or after doing this training you could now get back and be able to say okay um this day i had this run on this particular project and here were my lost values here were my mean average position values and so on and so forth so that's it and then here you also have some locks so everything that has been locked you could actually view this year so even after closing your collab notebook you could always get back and view all these locks we also have files uh you could click up on this you see we have these different files we have artifacts like your model so um now you have this model you have files here you see you have this file that's the model which we are actually training is now being stored in 1db such that even after closing your collab notebook you can always get back to this same model right here and be able still to make use of it now the training is complete as we could see right here we are having the best average position of 41.89 which is slightly less than what we had when we we're dealing with the yellow xs model which had the best average position of 45 and what's also to be noted here is this average inference time of eight milliseconds let's say nine milliseconds this is split into the forward time and the non-mass suppression time and so based on this results you have now the choice of either going in for the yellow x nano or the yellow xs model or just any other model which you have trained and then evaluated it should also be noted that unlike with these evaluations on the general purpose cocoa data set where we had this great difference between the mean average position for the yellow xs and the mean average position for the yellow x nano now here we have an instead 45 and then here we have in 40 while with this we have a speed on the k80 so let's let's have this k80 which is a collab uh, gpu we have in the free gpu given to us by google collab we have um here gave us like say 20 milliseconds so we, here we have 20 this is in milliseconds so here we had 20 milliseconds while here we are having a speed of 9 milliseconds and so with this going in for this kind of light models isn't too much of a bad idea since the speed is dropped with respect to this one by two so this is twice or more than two times faster than the yellow xs model and the drop in mean average position isn't that much although if you have some initial requirements of the mean average position of like say you, you fixed the minimum to be at 45 then you would have to go for this yellow xs getting back to the notebook and training for more epochs that is up to 30 epochs we get even better results you see here we have a uh, mean average position best result of 43.36 percent with an average inference time which is even lower than what we had before so here we're having like six approximately six milliseconds for the average inference time now let's go ahead and do a demo so let's get back here we have yellow x nano demo we're not going to be using this original model so that's not very useful we have to specify the best yellow nano model so to have this you just have to get back here yellow voc nano 
and then you pick out the best so we have your the best model which we are going to copy just as we did with the voc with the yolo xs and then we paste it here so this is it just here which we've done already and then we specify this path here so let's run this now and then see what we get uh while waiting for that let's check let's reduce this we have yolo x nano check out the inference time this is 40 milliseconds um here we have that let's check out this last one here click on that and here are the results so you see that it does quite well though it detects the shoes twice and you should also note that this detection is done on this image which has never been seen by the model now let's uh modify this take another image this time around this image has been seen by the model so we expect to get even more much more perfect results let's click here and see the results we get in so we have this here we click on that and there we go now let's reduce this see we have shirt we have pants we have shoe so that's it and then you see the time it takes like it's 40 milliseconds and then from here we now move on to the evaluation where we would just simply run this eval.py file which is given to us right here so with that we have this we, we again specify our yellow voc nano file we have the best weights and then we specify we are dealing with just one gpu and that's fine let's also modify this confidence score so let's say we're dealing with a confidence score of 0.2 and that's it let's run now and here's what we get we see that we have now this mean average position of 0.41 percent, with an average inference time of 5 milliseconds then if we modify this confidence score modify this confidence score say 0.1 we see we get slightly better result and so this should help you in choosing this confidence score when trying to run a demo